Hello and welcome to this short introduction to RNA Scope. My name is Kai Wilkins and I want to amaze you. RNA Scope marks the true breakthrough in RNA in C2 hybridization technologies and it gives you completely new options for your research. The majority of markers we look at today are derived from the RNA world from gene expression profiling done with either microarrays or today with next-gen sequencing. To validate such candidate markers, you can use PCR or immunohistochemistry. Both these technologies have their shortcomings. With PCR, you give up the tissue context and you face complicated workflows, especially on routine samples like formalin fixed tissues. With immunohistochemistry, you are depending on good antibodies. So very often you have a lack of sensitivity or specificity because of that. RNA scope integrates both, so you get a molecular and the morphological context at the same time with a single assay. RNA scope offers PCR like sensitivity and specificity, and it maintains the immunohistochemistry like workflow and scalability and gives you the cellular resolution, so the tissue context. So it's no wonder that we have probes for assays where antibodies typically fail or give difficulties, like secreted proteins, like very low expressed ones, like non-coding RNA or receptors. What makes RNA scope different from other RNA in situ hybridization technologies? We have applied a couple of tricks to tremendously boost signal over noise. The first trick we apply is we design pairs of oligonucleotides, we call them double Z pairs, and those bind to the target transcript and they have a target recognition portion for this. But in addition, each of these oligonucleotides has a linker and a sequence we call tail one for the left and tail two for the right one of these pairs. And together, they are able to bind a pre-amplifier molecule. This is a long single-stranded DNA, has a highly repetitive portion, and this repetitive portion can be loaded with many amplifiers, again single-stranded DNA, and this can be hybridized with labeled oligonucleotides. The label can be a fluorescent dye, but it can also be a conjugated enzyme like horseradish peroxidase and alkaline phosphatase. The second trick here is we do not apply a single double Z pair, but in our default design, we design 20 of these pairs, so loading up to 20 of these Christmas trees, further boosting the signal. You can never avoid that some of these oligonucleotides bind in wrong places. However, a single of these oligonucleotides is not long enough to hold the Christmas tree. It would be washed off, so we have effectively decoupled the hybridization event from the signal. The results look like you see in this slide. Now here we stained HeLa cells. On the left hand side we used a POLR2A probe to stain this low copy housekeeping gene. Each of the brown dots represents a single copy of POLR2A. On the right hand side we apply a negative control and make sure all signal is specific. We have tested out how many Christmas trees do we need to load to any molecule to see it coming up as a dot? So we have designed probes that consist only of a single pair of double Z, of two pairs shown in the middle, or of three double Z pairs on the right hand side. With three pairs, so loading three Christmas trees, you clearly see the signal coming up from the assay. This means that once you load three Christmas trees, you get to see the molecules as dots. Our default design has 20, so you see that this assay has a lot of built-in robustness and redundancy. This slide now shows you a clinical sample rather than the HeLa cells from the former slides. Here we look at breast cancer tissue and it's stained for the HER2 transcript. Each of the brown dots again represents a single copy and in a nutshell, this gives you an idea what RNA scope allows you to do. You have a robust routine assay that can give you molecular detection in the morphological context. We not only have developed one Christmas tree, but we have developed four different ones, ones with distinct sequences and you can use them in parallel. 
this enables you to multiplex the technology. So then one of the Christmas trees gets loaded with horseradish peroxidase and the other one with alkaline phosphatase. You can convert different substrate with different colors. Alternatively, you can use fluorescent dyes and plex up to four. This gives you the result from a fourplex in a HeLa cell. The highest expressor in this collection is beta-actin. It's about a thousand copies in the cell. The lowest is HPRT here, so you have roughly 10 copies of HPRT1 in the HeLa cell seen here. The workflow is very similar to what you know from immunohistochemistry. So the left part is the pretreatment portion. After a deparaffinization, you block the endogenous peroxidase activity. You do a boiling step for epitope retrieval, and then you permeabilize the tissue with a protease treatment. In the middle, instead of incubating with antibodies, we build our Christmas trees. And on the right hand side, we do the DAB chromogenic reaction and counter staining. And after eight hours, you get your results. Ideally, you run positive and negative probes with your target probe of interest. In this example, we apply ubiquitin C as the positive control that gives a quite strong staining here in this example. On the right hand side, we run the negative control that should be clean and ensure that all the staining is specific. And in this example, HER2 is used as the target probe. The technology indeed is very robust and can cope with the RNA degradation that you have from 15 year old storage in some shelf. So here we look at an archival tissue section. We stain for a low copy housekeeping gene, POLR2A, and you can nicely see the dots showing up in the tissue. What you observe, some of the dots are really big and others are small. This reflects the degradation that happens in this tissue over time. So some of the molecules targeted are fully intact and exposed and load 19 or 20 of the Christmas trees, whereas others are compromised and can only load two or three Christmas trees and hence form a smaller spot. Arenoscope is highly specific. Here you look at the xenograft sample, so a human tumor grown on mouse. When you look at the human tissue region, then the human TGF-beta probe gives a nice signal, whereas the homologous mouse probe does not. When you look at the surrounding mouse tissue, it's vice versa. So the human probe does not give signal, but the marine TGF-beta probe does. The cutoff for RNA scope is about 85% homology. If the homology is less, the assay will discriminate. If you have 95% homology or more, the assay gives the full signal, so it also would ignore point mutations. When we started out with a brown assay, we ran into some melanoma researchers and they asked if we can offer something on a different color base. Um, so we developed the red version of the assay and on the right hand side you can see the red signal from the assay is easy to be distinguished from the brown melanoma pigmentation. I already mentioned the multiplex capabilities of RNA scope. So here we have loaded one of the Christmas trees with horse reddish peroxidase and another one with alkaline phosphatase and with two different substrates you create a duplex assay. Um, this was done on FFPE and um, in red you see a cocktail of cytokeratin probes giving a strong staining for the breast cancer cells and in bluish turquoise we have um, stained the plasminogen activator. Here is a second example uh, where we stain lung cancer samples for PCAM in red and EGF receptor in turquoise. As mentioned in the beginning, the majority of markers today are derived from the RNA world. Such candidates then can followed up with immunohistochemistry, especially if you feel you need the tissue context. But to develop antibodies, this can take a long time and the success rate is low. With RNA scope, we can deliver a new probe in two to three weeks and they always work. And what's even more important, they work with universal assay conditions. Meaning, once you have established the correct pretreatment conditions, it works the same way for any target or housekeeper of interest with no need for optimization of concentration or incubation conditions. The one thing that changes is the bottle that is boxed here in white. 
Obviously, these features make RNA scope very scalable. We have applied this rationale to find suitable markers to distinguish between severe benign nevi and melanoma. This is an open need in molecular diagnostics. We started out on public available microarray data covering 23,000 transcripts and at the first stage we identified 23 potential candidate markers using bioinformatic analysis. Those 23 markers were tested on 100 samples on a TMA. We were able to reduce the number of candidates to just six and we tested these on another 150 samples and further reduced it to just three markers that were clinically validated. The whole project only took seven months and this slide shows you the quality of the final assay. There is a growth marker that is active in both the B9 EV tissue and in the tumor melanoma tissue and we've identified two other markers that are only expressed in the tumor tissue. We feel that RNA scope is a very suitable platform to establish companion diagnostic markers for example. The uniformity of the assay conditions also allow automation. We have established an automation solution on the Ventana discovery platform about two years ago and meanwhile we can also offer RNA scope on the Leica Bond RX. We have different options to analyze the data. One way to do this is the classical scoring that you know from immunohistochemistry. In this example you see a scoring of a non-coding RNA in prostate cancer going from 0 to plus 4. In many projects it may be interesting to go beyond such scoring and utilize the digitaliness of RNA scope, so counting dots in a particular cell. To automate this process we have partnered with Definience, an image analysis software company. Together with Definience we have developed a software that allows you to identify nuclei, suggest cell boundaries and count the dots within a cell and the software lists the results in tables or can show the results in a graphical way. It is obvious that RNA scope is very suitable for clinical samples. In this example we look at an FFPE had a neck cancer sample and it was tested for human papilloma virus. This very patient is positive for human papilloma virus type 16 but it was negative for the other high risk HPV types. So RNA scope allows to discriminate between different HPV types which is important for diagnostics. This assay was used in many clinical trials and many also have been published. One example is shown here. In this study Dr. Jim Lewis tested 182 head and neck cancer patients if they are HPV positive and he was able to identify 28 more positive cases with RNA scope in comparison to DNA SISH. This additional sensitivity and the high specificity of RNA scope gives the much better prognostic power as reflected in the plotted Kaplan Myers curves. What do you need to run RNA scope? So first of all you need probes, target probes and control probes. You can choose from a catalog of about 4000 probes to date and this is growing rapidly. However, we can design a new probe for any tissue, any target, any species in just two to three weeks. Next you need reagent kit that can be a single plex in brown or red. It can be the duplex chromogenic designed for FFPE. It can be the RNA scope automated version or it can be the fluorescent that comes as a threeplex. We also offer control slides that's great samples to start with and we recommend to use the oven that is seen here in the picture. We call it the Hype Easy and it ensures smooth incubation conditions and uh, protect the samples from drying out. We also offer assay services which is widely used by pharma companies for example to establish companion diagnostic markers and we also offer the Spot Studio image analysis software that are introduced. With this I would like to thank you for your attention, interest and time and maybe you have research projects where RNA scope can make a difference. Don't hesitate to reach out to us for further information. Have a great day and bye.